not on a sign plan with the airport, but they have been paying the account down um, every month. The payout um, sales service actually came in and paid. They were past due three months. If you remember, we signed a special lease with them. They were past due three months. They've come in and prepaid. They got they paid the past due balance and prepaid the account in full until December. So the past due rent summary has changed since the reports created. Most of those accounts have been settled up. Other than that, the only other note I had was, if you recall at our last meeting, there was a request to have delinquent personal property taxes, um, a list given to the commission. On the last, it's not attached to your financial summary, it's the, the page after that in your packet. The names of the companies highlighted in blue are current tenants on the airport that have delinquent taxes. The X's in it are tenants that are no longer um, have tenancy here at the airport, so they've either uh, legally been removed or left of the property. So the total due on this, Mike, is 51683 Am I reading that right? Correct. That's on 189 properties. But again, the X's are no longer tenants. So the what's highlighted in blue is current tenants. But the 51000 but, but, but that's delinquent property taxes, and it's not the airport, and it's... Correct. Mr. Van Oss's problem, right? Thanks, John. <laughs> so we can talk about that at the board meeting. Anything else, Mike? Nope. Oh, that's all I have to report on the um, the financials. Anyone else have any comments or questions on the October financial report? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to receive and file. No motion. Post by Mr. Stoll, supported by Mr. Fulbaum, to receive and file the October 2015 financial report. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number six is the manager's report. Uh, item 6A is the video shoot. I just wanted to update the commission. As you drove in today, you probably noticed there's a large amount of vehicles parked on the north side of the hangar. Uh, last week, we negotiated and signed a last-minute video shoot with a company. It's not for a movie. It's for a short film that goes along with a video game. Uh, it's a military base. That's all I'm allowed to say publicly. But um, the airport signed that last week. There's going to be about five days total of shooting, a couple of the prep days involved in there. Um, they're going to use our hangar one for two days as a set. And then the rest are actually going to use a field back in the nature area and then a part of the woodsy area staged up. So five-day shooting total. Uh, the airport was able to negotiate $9,000 in revenue out of the deal. So that's kind of a, will be a good bump up because our photo shoots were a little bit lagging this summer. They were still decent, but not as they have been in the past two years. So this will kind of bring us back up to on par with what we normally do in a year, in the land, or at least over the last three years. Is it a local company, Mike? It you know. is a local company, but there's a lot of umbrella companies involved in it. Some of the talent is flown in from L.A. and other parts of the country. So it's kind of a collaboration of local and national. The scouts who I know and have been dealing with are local. You said 9000 right? $9,000, correct. Any comments or questions for Mike on the video shoot? Job keep up. Hearing none, we'll move on to item number seven, which is our action items. Um, item 7A is the Outer Limits Custom Lease. And we have a resolution before us that reads, based upon the recommendation from the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Manager, the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Commission hereby review, renews a lease between Craig Bogart and the Grozeal Municipal Airport. A formal lease will be developed pending approval by commission. <clears throat> Terms of the proposed lease agreement are listed in the history, purpose, and explanation section of this resolution. Motion by Mr. Van Oz. Or by Mr. Holboom. Mm -hmm. Under discussion, uh, Mike, do you want to, is it, this is just as it relates to the addition we're doing to the building? Correct. correct? This, this lease follows up with what we negotiated with the tenant on the addition to the building. So it's a guaranteed five-year lease with revenue stream coming from it. The um, lease went from 455 uh, per square foot to 480 a square foot. So we increased that slightly. Um, the airport is going to pay for the building, the concrete slab, the walls, the insulation. The tenant has agreed to 
um, expense the any HVAC electrical and lighting upgrades in return for no CPI increases on those five years of the lease. Um, I feel like that's a fair shake, and you can see on the one page there where I break down the financials, it looks like ROI when you don't include or assume any utility expenses is about six years, so a decent rate of return, and um, I think is a nice upgrade for the building. Again, as mentioned, I'll, I'll probably bring up in a future meeting. I'm gonna. We don't have the quote yet, um, but there's the paint is faded on that building into a couple of different colors, north versus south side. So the addition is going to have one nice finished color on it. I think this would be a great time to wherever the heritage buildings um, match. I'm sorry, ship off more paint to us so we can paint the rest of the complex to match. I think it would be a good opportunity to um, address some of the aesthetics on that complex. And Mike, I'm assuming the upgrades, the electrical and HVAC they do are all um, done through a permit process, so there is um, review through the building department? Correct. That was negotiated as in part of the lease. That will be included in there. I'm sorry to include that in my notes. It has to be permit pulled, licensed contractor for those upgrades. Tenant cannot do any of the work himself. Are there any other comments or questions on the outer limit lease renewal? Hearing none, we've got a motion by Mr. Van Oz, supported by Mr. Fulboom. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number nine is subcommittee reports. We have none tonight, so we will move on to item number 10A, um, which is our discussion items. And the first item is the island stowaway lease extension. And you should have all been uh, handed a letter uh, from First Merit Bank as it relates to an explanation as to why um, Island Stowaway is here tonight for an extension. They currently have a lease that runs through July 28th of 2026, and my understanding is they are going through some refinancing, and the bank has asked that a five-year extension be granted. I'd like to induce Ms. Linda Perry and Mr. Mike Perry. Linda, I don't know if you... Yes, if you could <laughs> join us at the podium. Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> if you, uh, Linda, if you'd like to explain, uh, obviously we have the letter, but if you explain what you're doing and we'll go from there. Okay, um, we recently decided to refinance because for better interest rate. And in doing so, um, we met with a gentleman from First Merit Bank and everything looks great, we're approved, but there is the concern of the lease. Um, when leased property uh, is, is, is a disadvantage when you're, when you're mortgaging and they wanna be, the bank wants to be assured that um, we have that lease out in the event that we couldn't pay it, which will not happen, but it, it's, Banks require these types of regulations. So I'm asking to extend the lease um, five years so that we can get the refinancing and move forward. Always business. Great. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, this is a great community. For, Mike, it's for, okay. <laughs> what uh, percentage of your units are full? Um, 90, a little over 90 percent. Yeah, it's, it's, we have good customers. I can't complain. Mike, so we would be extending the lease for five years based on a rental rate, if I remember what you had here, it was for uh, CPI increases every year. Correct. Through so years you're... 11 through 20 or 12 through 25. Yep. So it'd be 12 through 30 if we approve the extension with CPI increases. Okay. Does everybody see that in the resolution sheet that's attached? You turn to the, um, actually the back page of the first page, it indicates what the current monthly and annual payments are and indicates that in years 12 to 25 is based on a, a increase of the CPI index and what we would be doing is extending it for another five years with the same 
rental rate based on the CPI increases. Mr. Chair. Mr. Rental. A couple things. One, I kind of reject the letter, the letter that Peter Kelly put together in his arguments. Two, the pairs have been great tenants. They're not going anywhere. And they're part of this airport and have been for a long time. So I'd like to just move the discussion to a resolution. And I move that we extend their lease five years so they can move on with this. I will read the uh, resolution before us, and it reads, based upon the recommendation of the airport manager, the Grozeal Airport Commerce Park Commission hereby approves an extension of lease dated July 19, 2007, between Grozeal Municipal Airport and Island Stowaway. This extension shall be for a term of five years, which would extend out through uh, 2031. Motion by Mr. Rathel. Who sorted? I did. Mr. Van Oz. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that, that's, yeah, they're, yeah. they're video. video. Oh, okay. <laughs> the uh, next item is item number 10D, which is building 63 storage management operation. And we have, do you have a resolution? Mike? No, we don't have a resolution. We have the, I attached the original resolution for oh. the approval of the okay. uh, inside agreement so the the commission can have a little background on it. Um, I included a breakdown with annual revenues from Building 63, our indoor storage operation. Um, and then I also included the uh, management agreement that we approved in September of 2009 uh, when we did have two proposals, one from actually Island Stowe for that operation and the other from Dave's Hot Rod Garage. At the time of receiving the proposals, um, management office was unhappy with, didn't feel comfortable with either proposal, so they went back and renegotiated, and Dave's Hot Rod Garage is what the airport ended up approving. Um, so since September of 2009, they've been operating basically on renewals for their storage operation out of their... So they're operating right now on a one-year extension of this original lease? They're really on a month-to-month, -month, but it would be considered, for all intents and purposes, it's a seasonal day. I look at it in the winter, summer. So every, like, kind of, we would always do, like, six-month renewals on it. So are we just looking for a discussion tonight, or are you... Correct. Are you the commission, I've had requests from several commissioners to um, bring the financials forward and have the discussion about going back out for um, RFEs on because of the time that's elapsed going back up for RFPs on a new storage operation or maybe the same operation that we currently have. So I feel, felt I'd bring this forward and at least explain to the commission what what the um, operation's been for the last couple of years and show the history. I'll open it up for discussion. Um, we have the option of either extending, it, either keeping it at month to month, extending it for a year, or going out for a request for proposal to see if there's any other um, prospect out there that would be interested in, in submitting a proposal. Mr. Chair. Mr. Rathel. I'll start out. Um, I strongly recommend that we keep it at the current uh, month to month. And uh, after this rental season, this winter season is over, sometime be going out in February. Uh, early March uh, to see what else is out there to um, see if we can get a better deal for our, for our airport with this facility if we're going to keep it as a storage facility. Mr. Chair, if I may also add just for reference, the building over there is 43,800 square feet. When you break down the totals, like the fiscal year 12, 13, it equates, it, it ranges from about 75 cents a square foot when we first started the operation to about a dollar a square foot per year we're getting now for the operation, just for reference. So if we were to charge that to a commercial tenant, our normal ask is about 225. Granted, there's a, I look at it as a less, a lot less wear and tear on the building. There's not an active company, you know, putting wear and, and use on the building. We're just storing vehicles and boats and things like that. Not that there isn't somewhere associated with that, but just for reference, it, it varies from at the start to about 75 cents a square foot per year, up to now we're at about a dollar from rates have increased on the complex. So. 
There has already been a couple people that have approached us on uh, an interest level of uh, putting a, a proposal together. Um, we put this together, I feel, hastily um, to just have somebody manage a facility. Um, and I think that we just need to do our due diligence this spring, late winter, spring, to um, go out and make sure that we have the best deal for the airport. The current tenant is the best deal for the airport. Great. But, um, I think it's time that we do that. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Van Oz. Uh, not, not knowing what the rental unit number is, I, I'm getting a lot of feedback. Several people have called and wanted to know why we're giving the hangar away. I'm not sure with this that we are giving it away. But we are getting less than half the residual rent we should get for a building of that size. So we've got two choices. Either we try to rent the building out in its entirety, uh, continue th the current process, as John said, till February and go out and see if there's another market so that when the people call, say, we went out and we got no feedback, uh, I think that's probably a smart way to go and uh, or negotiate. Well, if we're going to negotiate another deal with uh, and then I think we need to uh, go out for bids on it. Just take a look at it. I think that'd be the smart way to go anyway, because I, I hate to go into anything more than a one-year lease because it really ties that building up at some point in time if it, somebody does show any interest to it. I mean, if we get locked up with a bunch of cars in there for two or three years, we'll never sell the building. So I think we got to keep it as short-term as we can, and that's to our disadvantage as far as going out looking for tenants, but that has to be part of the negotiation. Oh. Question and a comment. Uh, did you say we're only getting paid six months of the year? No, we, we normally operate on what I would call six-month renewals. We get paid year-round from this. The summer storage operations, obviously, not as big of a money maker as the winter time. So everybody wants more space in the winter for storage. What to address to add on to Mr. Van Oss's points? It's really smart idea to operate this thing on six-month windows because, say, we're four months into a six-month lease and we've got somebody who comes in and wants to rent that whole complex out. If we sign a one-year lease, we're tied until the end of that one year unless we can negotiate buying the current tenant out or whatever we negotiate. But if you keep it, again, it's to our advantage, but it's also a disadvantage for trying to uh, recruit somebody to manage the storage operation of that building. But if we can keep it to six months, I feel that at least lowers the risk on losing a tenant if they're interested in the, in the complex. What month do you suggest that the... Uh that we stop um, leasing to them, a guaranteed lease on a monthly basis. If I recall, we would normally do the renewals one of the spring months, June or July. I, th I think June is the month that. What I recall, and then we'd pick up again. Well, it takes his rentals to his winter rentals. But he currently only he currently only has a month to month. Correct. Correct, but if we were ever get a new tenant in, I mean, the amount of logistics that would have to go into notifying the renters from the management company, I would treat it like a six month. To be fair, I mean, I don't, I don't see how we would physically get everything removed in thirty days. I mean, there would have to be a, a window there for to, just to, to keep the tenant fair and honest. I mean, that's I think the appropriate thing to do. My la my last comment is, why would we wait until spring to? research new tenants why wouldn't we do that now and just guarantee the people that they can have the place till june if you guys want we can we could go out for rfps on management operations now beginning summer or springtime winter time what i would say would best to get coax a management company because that's where the big revenue comes in it's a little harder for somebody to start off in the summertime where they're making less revenue but that can all be negotiated mr chair mr right <clears throat> the distinction is our current tenant being on month to month and then later down the road when we put together um, a request for proposals that that can include six month increments. But today we don't need to do a six month lease extension. We can stay on a month to month. The tenant that we currently have isn't going anywhere. Correct. I'd say the current tenant is so, 
excited about a month month lease and would prefer you know i think it's assumed that we would give a fair notice if something were to arise well i mean of course they'd like to lock up uh the facility for years and years and years with their current uh, lease, but this current lease isn't good for the township in my, or the airport, in my opinion. But to Walt's point, maybe we should start working on going out with. Uh, well, we got somebody in the audience right now that might be interested in. Right? They're in the storage <laughs> business. <Mike>. <laughs> um, so there, there's a lot of uh, unknowns of how many and who would be interested in in this. And then there's also the unknowns Ted brought, brought up, is what's the future of the facility? Is it storage? Are we going to make a determination that our long-term use of this facility is storage? Which, okay, I mean, if that's what we decide. But um, we haven't had that discussion either. We just sort of coasted along, not worrying about this building. But it's time that we start focusing on it. Well, that all could change when we go to our closed session today, too. So, good. I see no reason why we need to address. I mean, the lease is month to month. I think we ought to just stay on it until we're ready to do something different. Should we go out? Should we start putting together RFPs now? Yeah, or? I think we should. Yep. I, I really think we should take a look at some RFPs for this. And okay. Because I'm getting a lot of flack. I mean, not just me. Several of the other board members are, too. Just to clarify, Ted made... The statement that it's Andy that's leasing it's not it's I'm sorry Dave's Hot Rod Garage is the management Dave's company for that Garage, property and from from a management perspective this current arrangement is still a little difficult it just takes time to manage in house on my end you know the previous manager tried to actually manage the storage operation over there and that's when we went out for bid because it wasn't working out well and the, the revenues were screwed up but even this you know there's we take revenues to pay the utilities, and then management has to do accounting to that, and then revenues are split. So in my eyes, it would be easier to see if we can get somebody to just pay a lower flat rate square foot number and let them pay the utilities and default that in-house. That's a little difficult to do for some people, and that may not get any proposals back. So we'll look at it a couple different ways. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure that that's correct because he's had a couple of years to – whether the storm on this thing, he now knows what that building is worth doing what he's doing with it. I'm sure he would be eager to, if, if this commission so decided to long-term this out of storage, I'm sure he'd be very eager to get involved because it's got pretty, there's been pretty successful as an indoor storage facility over there. All right. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, we will move on to item number 11, which is the chairman's report. I have nothing new to report tonight, so we will move on to public comment. Anyone in the public would like to make comment? Hearing none, we will move on to item number 13, which is the adjourn to a closed session. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn to a closed session. So moved. Motion by Mr. Fulbaum, supported by Mr. Rachel, to adjourn to closed session. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries.